The next thing that you want to make sure that you can do is draw a basic supply and demand graph and then know what kinds of things are going to shift both those curves. So, remember that the way you want to draw these is to have price, vertical, quantity, horizontal. It's counterintuitive if you know anything about mathematics. I've asked professors before why this seems a little backwards. They don't know. This is just how it's drawn. So don't get creative with this. Price, vertical, quantity, horizontal. Demand slopes down because at higher prices, people demand lower quantities. At lower prices, people demand higher quantities. That's human nature. You want to buy more stuff cheaper. Supply is going to be the opposite, opposite, because while the consumer has the goal of buying more stuff cheaper, the business has the goal of making money off of the people buying your stuff. So, what we have on the supply side, P and Q again, and if you want to, you can draw in zero. Supply slopes upward, because at lower prices, The business is willing to provide less stuff to you at higher prices where they're going to make more revenue, they're going to provide more. So the reason these two curves are backward is because you're dealing with two completely opposite sets of motivations. More stuff cheaper, more stuff higher price. When you put these two together, you always want to make sure that you mark the equilibrium price and quantity on each axis. With a free response question dealing with a supply and demand curve, oftentimes that's worth a whole point. So you don't want to get sloppy or get in a hurry and leave that out. It is important. So what you want to do is go over to your price line and straight down to your quantity line and make sure that you mark your equilibrium. Equilibrium is where the two curves intersect. On a demand schedule and supply schedule, this would be where the price and quantity are going to be equal on both. Now, factors that can cause demand to shift would be things like consumer tastes and preferences. Something comes into style, demand increases. Nobody wants it anymore, demand decreases. An increase means you slide away from zero, and this is true of both curves. A decrease means you're sliding left or toward zero. Don't think of it in terms of up and down, because that gets a little bit confusing, a little bit messy. Increase is right, decrease is left. So if people want something more because it's in style, demand increases. If you have more money, you buy more stuff, demand increases. Um, let's see. If the government lowers taxes and gives you more of an income, demand increases. Just think of it in terms of anything that makes you want to buy or makes you able to buy more things. That will increase demand. And just the opposite would cause demand to decrease or shift left. Those are all your determinants of demand. I'm cutting a little bit of corners here. Um, you know, just because you've already seen all this before. With supply, it's the same basic principle. Anything that makes it easier for a business to produce causes supply to increase. Anything that makes it harder for a business to produce causes supply to decrease or slide left. If the business, for example, um, decides that a machine that's used in a particular industry is really unsafe, taking away some of their technology, supply slides to the left. If you have New businesses enter a market, you have a whole bunch more producers get in on the action, supply would slide to the right. Because we're dealing with not individual suppliers, that would be more of a micro thing, we're dealing with the whole market. So more businesses, they feel more positive about future prices, they think the economy is doing well, supply increases. Okay, those would be your determinants of demand. Now. One of the questions that we've had lately that we've been dealing with that you guys have been forgetting is the difference between a movement and a shift. A 
change in any one of your determinants of demand or supply causes a shift. Shift means you pick up the curve and you move it. What that results in is a new price and a new quantity. If demand increases, ceteris paribus, nothing else moves, price goes up, quantity goes up. They both increase. Now, what happens if all we change is the price of this product? We're not talking about a price of a substitute or a complement. That can cause demand to shift. We're talking about the price of the good that the curve is drawn for. If all that happens is that the price of this good decreases, let's say, for example, that we're talking about the market for corn. And we have this huge jump in the number of firms supplying corn, which has happened. So that what we end up with, that's weird, we're at almost the same point. Let's say we're at P2 and Q2. All we've done is slide down the curve. A change in the price of a product does not shift its demand curve, does not shift its supply curve. They're drawn to accommodate different prices in different quantities. Okay? A change in a determinant of supply or demand causes a shift. A change in the price of the product causes a movement. Movement is on the curve. Shift means you pick up the whole curve. And if you get that backwards, you are dead in the water for at least half a dozen multiple choice questions. So if this is a problem, you definitely need to work on it.